I'm so honored to be receiving this award from GLAAD, an organization I know so well and have had the pleasure of working with so many times over the years. There's something especially meaningful about being acknowledged by your peers, and GLAAD is my peer. GLAAD has held a special place in my heart, as well as Jennifer since I started working with them at least about 25 years ago. GLAD's work is done with such special skill, precision, and expertise, but it's the extra that GLAD brings, which is true love and care for the clients and work that everyone gives at GLAD. So thank you to everyone at GLAD and to all of you here tonight and watching from home who support the work that GLAD does. To be recognized with the Spirit of Justice Award from an organization that is doing such fabulous work and has changed the landscape of so many lives for better than 40 years is just amazing. And GLAD does do the work, which is a good thing because there is a lot of work to do. Now, I know you know just how bad this year has been, particularly for the transgender community. You've heard about some of that earlier tonight. There have been an unprecedented number of assaults on our transgender young people coming from state houses across the country. It breaks my heart. These are attacks on kids who just want the chance to be themselves, to play, and to get the health care they need. Adults in the community, black and brown transgender people, and particularly transgender women, still experience so much violence and so many survival struggles because of racial and anti-LGBT discrimination. Some of these attacks aren't new, but transgender people have been used as a political wedge issue more than ever before this year. And because of that, people are hurting. So what can we do? Well, for one thing, we can pass the Equality Act, and we can do it as quickly as possible. We've been fighting for comprehensive federal protections for LGBTQ people for as long as I've been in the movement. It's time we got them in place for so, so that everybody in the LGBT community is protected from discrimination, no matter where they live, no matter who is in the White House or who controls their state house. Another thing we can do when it comes to transgender youth especially, is we have to reach the parents. You heard Carmen, and I have to say that I had two wonderful parents, and they always are on my shoulders, no matter where I am or where I stand. And they're no longer with us, but they still are always with me, Fanny and William. You heard Carmen earlier speak about how important that work is, and I know very well how important it is. I was fortunate to have the two parents who loved and embraced me as their child, even way back in the day, and that made it possible for me to do the work and be who I am today. I've represented parents who at first resisted accepting their transgender child because they didn't understand but I've also put those same parents on the stand in support of their kids once they did the work 
to learn. It's so powerful to see a parent who was initially so resistant get up and talk about the journey they went through and how they got to that place where they could go to court to support their child changing their name, correcting their gender, and just being who they are. So wonderful. Parents like Carmen and young people like Ashton remind me that even in a hard, hard year, we can't give up. Giving up and going home wouldn't be the right answer for me. It never is. And I bet it wouldn't be the right answer for any of you either, or you wouldn't be here tonight. There's so much work to do when it comes to justice for all our communities, even things none of us has even thought about. So I want to talk a little about how we can do that work. First, I think we need to learn to be more gentle and kind with each other. We are too divided even in our own communities. Fighting with each other, leaving parts of our community out of the conversation, focusing too much on our own egos or walking away when things get challenging, that's just not the way. Yes, we're going to disagree, always and will and will always disagree. Uh, we can disagree, but we need to do that with kindness and love at the center. I could say that a little better, but I think you get my point. Um, we need to have ethics in our activism. I always tell people I'm working alongside. I run with a code of ethics. You should run with a code of ethics, whatever you're doing and however you're doing this work. We need our movement to be intergenerational. There were people doing this work long before I started, and there are going to be people doing this work long after me. I'm just one person carrying the ball for a certain period of time. To me, it's always been clear that activism is about replacing oneself. Young people, older people, people my age, all these perspectives make the work better. All those people give me hope. We need to learn to be allies with other communities. That's what we did in the early days when we sat down and figured out whose oppressions and goals were liberations at, that aligned with ours, who we were going to be allies with to grow this movement as trans and non-binary people. At the same time, we can't give away our power, the trans and non-binary movement needs to be led by trans and non-binary leaders. We need to have honest and realistic conversations with each other, but we can do that with kindness. We have to do the work to take care of ourselves too. Self-care is important. This work is tough. This life is tough. Find the things that help you navigate through it. If this means going to therapy, then go to therapy. We need to get rid of the stigma that's too often still attached to that. And we need to sh make sure that mental health resources are more accessible to everyone like any other health care. But the bottom line is find the thing that helps you take care of you because we need you. Above all, we need each other. I said at the start of this how meaningful it is for me to receive this prestigious honor from GLAD. That's because collaboration has always been central to how I've worked. Everything I've done, whether it's consulting on or testifying about bills like the Equality Act, working on LGBTQ civil rights litigation, organizing, writing, or teaching, it's always been about partnerships for me. And I've always felt like each place I wound up, I was meant to be there at that time. I like to say I'm like Captain Kirk, Dr. Spock, or Lieutenant Uhura.
I was just meant to be on the Starship Enterprise of this trans and LGBT movement. That's why it's extra special to have wound up here tonight with all of you. Celebrating my longtime collaboration with my friends at GLAAD and all the truly amazing and important work your support of GLAAD is making happen. I hope you keep that support going because we've got a lot of work to do and we've got a lot of good trouble to get into together. Thank you very much.